Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's Mills here, Pub Sports Radio. Do you guys want to challenge the personalities here on Pub Sports Radio? Do you guys think you're better than them at entering in your MMA predictions and picks? Would you want to get paid for it? $100? Here's how you do it, man. You sign up right here at the link below. It's just this easy. PubSportsRadio.com. Enter your email. Pick your weekly picks. That's it. Oh, and you get bonus points if you can predict how they're going to win and what round. Every single week, a new winner is getting crowned. So every Saturday on Pub Sports Radio. So come on and check us out. You can win $100 just for signing up. Only thing you need to do is see if you can beat us here at Pub Sports Radio by entering your UFC predictions and picks weekly. Do it. I dare you. See you guys soon. Good morning, America. Welcome to the MMA Locker Room Talk, Season 3, Episode 10. This is Big Show Picks, your host, coming in from Northern Michigan. It is currently 12.05. Who else we got in the car? Hey, yo, it's your boy, MMA Locker Room, checking in from Lake Elsinore. It's about 9.05. About to get it going on this Cali time. What's up? It's your boy, Billy Briz, DFS, down here in the good old South Jersey. Uh, getting ready for some PFL fights, and uh, oh, well, I'm excited, man! But uh, this is a UFC podcast, so you know, keep it on topic. This is my two cents here, checking in from the Eastern Shore of Maryland. It is a bright sun, sun shiny day, and it's just an awesome UFC Apex card. And very excited to be back and uh, to talk to you about it with you boys. Hope y'all are doing well today. All right, let's start the podcast off with a little recap of last week. Didn't have a show last week because I was down in San Antonio at Pubalooza 3. TC, I'll start with you. Uh, but first, shout out to T. Crowley, 11-21, for winning the pub contest last week with a great score of 680. Also, breaking news, don't bet main events. TC, how did you do last week? Oh, it was a fucking living nightmare for your boy. Got fucking reverse swept. Thank God I went light on it. But, yeah, everything I put up just got fucking crushed. Uh, yeah, shout out to T. Crawley. Uh, I believe that was his first uh, championship, so shout out to the newly crowned champ. Uh, I will be trying to take that uh, crown from you this week, sir. But, uh, yes, uh, congratulations. And, yeah, dude, the uh, the old adage, do not bet main events, could not have been more true, especially, like, having Blanchfield in parlays and just, man, it was rough for your boy. But, yeah, looking to bounce back this week. Billy, how'd you do last week? Uh, to be honest with you, I felt like one of those cards from like a uh, gambling perspective where like the bookies were like, get away, get away. Don't bet these fucking fights. You're going to get fucked over. And uh, we just went in head first. <laughs> one of those ones where Vegas is built off of fucking partly losses, but straight bets and props start coming through for me here. Uh, getting to the point where I feel like they're trying to discourage a young man from placing some parlays. But damn, man, if we can hit the straight bets and the props, I feel like one of these parlays got to come through, right? Eventually, eventually. Mills, how did you end up doing on Atlantic City? Oh, man, cold-blooded. She she left us cold-blooded with no money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but besides that, started off the card pretty well. Um I think I went wrong with ah, shit. I forget to be honest. You know what I mean. I know it wasn't my most profitable night um, at all, but it was a decent night. Uh, we did hit some live spots on the live stream. Me and Billy pretty much held it down by ourselves the whole goddamn stream. So shout out to everybody that was with us on the uh, on the live stream for that. Uh, shout out to the panel you. members. Um, but yeah, it was a uh, it was it was a decent it was. Cedric Dumas, you know, well, no, nah, let's just talk about it, bro. Too many eye pokes, man. Like, um, a lot of these fights should have been no cancel. Uh, Bruno Silva, I lost money with that one. Um, you know, so like, yeah, yeah, man, it wasn't the most um entertaining fights, you know, with all the eye pokes and yeah, you know, we'll stuff we'll, like that. we'll actually get into that a little bit later. But uh, we always kind of lean on you for the news, Mills. Anything coming out this week in the MMA news? And if so, what are you hearing? Yeah, so, you know, it's it's in the works now. Um, DDP will be defending this belt against Israel Alessandra in Perth. Um, that's going to be um, the new news that's, that's coming out right now. 
they got Izzy, I think, as like a minus 150 favorite on that one. So, you know, you got that that news that just came out. Uh, besides that, um, that's that's really one of the up and coming hottest stories out. Um, they did just sign Baki, a former PFL fighter who fought Cedric Dumbe. Um, so I look for him to make a splash to the UFC as well. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the big news right now. It's uh, pretty much the Izzy and DDP fight is up and going and running right now. Huge so massive. Yep. Huge massive. First thoughts on it, Mills. Oh man. Um damn, bro. Ugh. DDP right now is it's hard to go against him, man. I mean, I, I bet on him every single fight he ever fought in the UFC and I made money on him every single way um that I could. <sighs> Izzy, same thing, man. I damn near bet on him in every single fight in the UFC. Um but I didn't make money on him in every single way that I could. You know, I lost with him a couple of times. I got to go with DDP, man. I got to go with the guy that I just think has that it factor right now, um, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, I, I'm going to be playing DDP in that one. Anybody else want to touch on it before we move on? Any thoughts on it? I just think it's a great fight. I don't feel too strongly about it one way or another. What did you say the, uh, the opening line was? Who's the uh, favorite? They got Izzy minus 150. Yeah, I think that's about right, given the uh, the championship reign and, like, the high-level experience. I kind of just want to pass on it, honestly. I don't want to really, like, get greasy with that one. I just – I think it's a good fight, and I really don't know, like, what version of Izzy and Drikas I'm going to get. And, uh, yeah, just I, – I, I think that's about right. Like, it's kind of a pick in my mind, and I'm just probably going to stay away. Real quick, Billy, any thoughts on it? And what are, you, uh, what are your thoughts about the, the upcoming event for PFL tonight? Um, on the Israel Adesanya one, I mean, they're kind of just beating you back into, uh, I guess I'm rolling out DDP again at plus money. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, but PFL is about to be popping tonight. Uh, PFL regular season, not not these little bullshit shindig cars they've been putting together. No, it's the PFL regular season. Standings are back. Points are at its finest, and every fight counts. And uh, it's going to be a banger, man. They got the heavyweights in the female flyweight division, a couple of USC fighters coming over, a couple of Bellator fighters that are going to be entering the rankings. I think this is going to be the most competitive PFL season uh, yet alone. So um, I, I think with the influx of new talent and stuff like that, we're going to start seeing the evolution of the PFL uh, standings and stuff like that. Um, a lot of interesting fights on the main card. Dakota Djokova. Uh, she's coming over from PFL Europe. Um, she's going to be making her season debut here. We got Liz Ka Liz Katamush is back inside the cage against Juliana Vasquez for what it feels like the fifth time, but it's only the third time. And then the co-main and the main, man, two heavyweight showdown. It's one of those type of cards. Uh, we always say in the betting community, women's fights and heavyweights are the hardest to cap, but... Man, there's a lot of value in these chick fights tonight. I know I didn't ask the other boys about the PFL card. You guys got any takes or thoughts on it real quick? Yeah, so this is like the first PFL event I actually didn't do the virtual media for, but I still was able to uh, reach out and, uh, you know, connect with some of the fighters, some of the photographers. Uh, you know, the Dennis Goldstar fight versus uh, Linton Fassell, that's going to be a good one. I was able to collab with him on some of the photos I was made. He reposted them and stuff like that. Check out our Instagram and everything like that to see those. But besides that, yeah, Billy hit it on point about Dakota. Um, Chelsea Hackett's going to be on the card as well. Lucas Brendan. Um, you got a lot of P Bellator fighters fighting in the PFL season. It was kind of crazy when I was watching the weigh-ins. I'm like, wait, these are just Bellator fighters, but in the PFL season format. And I'm all for it, man, because I'm so tired of seeing PFL fighters just come out there looking like those uh, the fill in wrestlers, you know, to where it's like, hey, well, this is the guy with the name and this the guy without the name, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I like the format. Steve Mowry's on the card as well. Um, Next week, you got Solomon Renfro on the card. I think that's the smash spot of the of the year. He's minus 200. Um, But, yeah, I, I like all the fights tonight. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't like all the fights tonight, but I do like the price tags on some of these fights out there. I think there's ways to get paid on here. 
um, as well. So I did a I did a bulletproof parlay that was minus three hundred. I took a note out of Billy Briss, uh one in that one. But besides that, though, I do think there's some dogs that's going to be live on here. So, yeah, man. Uh, but this week, I'll just be honest with you guys. This week's card is trash compared to next week's card. Next week's card is when you guys are going to see the fighters for PFL, the real ones. My boy, J.J. Wilson, um, the Amari kid, Solomon Renfro, the list goes on. But next week's when you're going to see those real names. This week is just to get you guys familiar with the games. All right, getting them back to a little bit of the UFC. Huge win last week for Manna Perot over Aaron Blanchfield. What is the move for her right now? Does she wait for the title shot? Does she take another fight because of the Grasso Valentina Ultimate Fighter season? What do you guys think? Billy, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, if you're Prio, I feel like you just got to wait around for the title fight. It kind of sucks that, I mean, the age that she's at in her career, uh, shit what more do you got to do you just got to just be around honey show up at the weigh-ins weigh in as the backup and you're locked in for that title fight you might have to wait a little bit but i mean she's been waiting what 35 fucking years i mean what's another fucking year right yeah because the only thing that i mean if you think about it money would be the only thing and you're gonna get compensated by being in that main event in a title fight i think if you just wait right so look, I don't I, i'll tell you on this Manafro is not worried about money. She rocks Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and the list goes on. Like she does that in a warm-ups. Trust me, she ain't worried about the money. She's out I here warming knew, up in Louis. Warming up in Louis and Gucci like it's nothing. She's sweating in the in in in, 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 in fucking Chanel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I should have known. And I remember this. You remember this big show a long time ago? I picked her just off of her wardrobe. Because of her Gucci and everything. And then you said, oh, I'm not da 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 I can't, I can't cap. remember that shit. I can't cap that way. I can't cap that way. Though, you remember that shit. So, yeah, you can man, give out, like, You can give out some crazy shit like that. I can't do that. I'm not. Right. I'm not that known. You know right. where we fucked up, though, man? They always tell you women's MMA bet the uglier fighter. And, uh, You're damn, right. man. You're right. No, that's we not fucked where we fucked up one. at at all, bro. Like, I mean, like, how are you not going to bet on the girl that you've been betting on for the last four events? You know, like we said, you haven't been betting on Blanchfield for the past four events. Well, yeah. the yeah. the, we have. Dude, it's, the underdog, it's the underdog in the main event thing for me. Like, and I, I completely agree with y'all that she needs to wait. <laughs> she's 34. This is probably the best look she's going to have at it. And, like, that's just time to get ready for Valentina and or Alexa Grasso. Just, like, shore any parts of your game up that you don't think are just, like, fucking pimp tight. And, like, dude, you're just – it's way too much of a risk to, like, take a fight against, like, another top fighter. Like, well, that just – a banana – slip on a banana peel, dude. And you're just, like – I feel like she's done enough that, yes, yeah, you just hang tight. Just be ready for the uh, th to be the backup and just keep in shape and just train. Fucking be ready when the top of it, comes. there's nobody else in the top. Like Aaron Blasfro should have been fighting for the title, Marin and Ferro should have been fighting for the title. Like, you know, like, so there Good is point. nobody that's even close to the top. Like, the Mason, right? Like, you know what I mean? There's no that's a good point. And, and, and you'd have to fight nobody. down. So she'd have right. to fight down and take a risk. Like, right, you could fight right. Macy Barber. That's a really dangerous fight, man. So, yeah. And I, I hear me out on this. The JoJo Carter Ward, she was, like, ranked number one, waiting for a title fight, and, you know, missed it. But that's a different story. She wasn't, like, right there, like, number one. Nobody else could fight for it. It was just that she was ranked, you know, next in line. And she took a fight, and she ended up losing to Jennifer Maya. But Carter Ward and Ferro is in two different categories in two different, you know, ballparks to where, like, yeah, Carter Wood was just kind of getting that gifted shot of fighting for the title. Man and Ferro is the well-deserved one, and Blanchfield was the well-deserved one, both of them. So, so yeah, man. Um, But, yeah, man, that was the main event. I mean, when it comes down to it, though, man, like, like I know you guys say that you guys want to not bet on MMA main events, so that's a, probably something that you guys would probably change going forward you know, uh, in, in, in betting and stuff. But as far as for me, man, I got to think about some stuff because uh, the way I've been going the last two weeks, I got to make some changes. Yeah, so what with all the answers... That, Go ahead, Billy. I, I, was just, I just wanted to know, what you, what you mean by that? Because I definitely feel like uh, 
Well, Billy, 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 just sit back and let the show go. And you'll see exactly I'm what just, I mean I'm just, by that. I'm just interested because UFC betting has definitely changed over the last, like, six to eight months than what it's been compared to, like, in the last two years. Just the price tags and everything. So, prime example. Seen. Prime example, Billy. Like, you know me. I used to always bet wrestlers and grapplers, right? Yeah. I'm done know. with that shit. I can't <laughs> bet them no more. I'm betting strikers. I'm betting I think, strikers. I think... So, that's, that's one thing right there to where, trust me, like, and it's so hard because I'm so used to it. I'm so, no, 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 I got to take the wrestler. I got to take the grappler. And now it's like, nah, man, it, it rude awakened in the last month and a half. You know, uh, yeah, like I said, so that's that's one right there um, to where I'm kind of changing my, my outlook on that. But, I mean, the rules of the game is the rules of the game. So we just got to figure out a way to get paid. I feel yeah. like there's, like, there's a couple factors that have been, like, that are now more, like, important or like are, are more of a, a a factor for lack of a better word like the the rule like changes supposedly and how the judges are valuing damage i think you got to factor that into your like reads i think you also have to factor in the location and the fact that like dude a lot of these are apex cards so like who's the hometown there who's the hometown crowd there the fucking bookies i was talking about this on aaron's show last night like i, I just feel like that has to be not the deciding factor, but you have to at least like that needs to be an exponent in the equation or whatever. Like the location, the the crowd, the the fact that we're in 2024 and the uh, the UFC is now merged with WWE. So like I feel like narrative and like I just feel like that plays more of a factor. But it's just still it's still a very chaotic sport to bet on. So I just feel like me personally. I'm just going to stick to my guns, man. I'm, I'm not going to, like, change shit up too much uh, based on a couple bad weeks. Um, I feel like that's my, like, in first instinct is to do, like, I've got to gotta fix something. But, like, no, I'm just going to keep doing my thing because doing that is how I've, uh, I've had success, too. So I'm just going to stick to my guns. Well, while you're still on the mic, PC, I'll ask you this. With all the antic last week and with all the eye pokes and the, the fence grabbing and the, the soft fucking – uh, calling of a fight, what rule changes would you like to see change throughout MMA? This is one thing I'd like to see changed, especially with with eye pokes and it really any kind of foul. One warning, then you're getting a point. I don't give a fuck how, if it was an accident on the second time, one warning, then a point. Now, I think Weidman should have been straight up fucking DQ'd because I think those were intentional eye pokes, but like, I don't like he he was so Copeland, that fucking clown was so quick to take a point from Herbert Burns. And I think it was deserved. But then Weidman did the same shit and he just like pussyfooted around it. So, yeah, my rule for like for referees should be you're given one fucking warning. Then you're taking a point. I don't care who the fucking fighter is. Is it one warning per foul, like say one fence grab or one eye poke and then the next fence grab is a fucking point? Yeah, awesome. I, th- I think I think it should be across the board. I don't. I, I think if you're committing multiple different fouls, it shouldn't be. Like, oh well, you did a different foul this time. No, if you're a foul you ass motherfucker, start count over again. Yeah, no, exactly. You ain't getting no fuck. We're not starting it over. You you got one warning for committing a foul. If you commit another fucking foul, you're getting a point taken. I, I, the, the cheating has got to stop, man. It's getting fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I think it's the opposite. The whole, you, the whole like, you get the one way to control the outcome of the fight is by controlling the way that the referee in the fight. So going back to what Mill said, like the optics for uh, Herbert Burns versus Julio Arce. I mean, Herbert Burns is like four inches fucking taller than the guy and he's poking him in the eye. Yeah. That's going to look not as bad as Cedric Dumas and fucking North and Ruzi Aboev where I honestly thought Ruzi Aboev clearly poked both of his eyes and then knocked them out. But he did. It was an eye poke that knocked. Like Dumas got poked bad, man. Yeah, but then when you see Wyman and Stova and the dudes acting like he just got shot by a fucking gun off of an eye poke, and he's already bigger, stronger, and faster, dude. Hey, they were I egregious. I, that last one was literally a two piece combo. Bro, like that was Chris horrific, Wyman, dude. Bro, you think they You think if Chris Wyman has an opportunity, to that's my Billy. You are. Ma- thank you for making my point. Go? Thank you for making my point. It's favoritism at, towards Chris Wyman. That's fucking really fucking bad. That's a bad I, I fucking I, look. 
I don't think it's a bad look, man. I mean, he's done. You a lot don't think that was a bad look? You don't think that fight was a bad look for the UFC? Jesus fucking Christ, Billy! No, bro. The bookies made money off of it. All those fucking, all those fucking ever made nerds that said, "Yeah, let me hit this knockout prop." Chris Wyman by KO TKO. They thought they had it, then the money got. Zipped you are right just back looking at this through such a narrow grease balls perspective. Overall, I think that was a horrible look for the UFC. And- everyone is bitching about it i guess except i me. kind of agree too i think it is kind of a horrible look the, the fact that we had so many eye pokes that you know became controversial you get one ending a fight you get one that you know it, it, was, it wasn't a good look all around for the card not necessarily just one fight in general yeah but i also don't want to get alonzo menafield when he was fighting the uh bull i think it was jimmy crute <laughs> He fucking poked him like once, and then there was a point taken away immediately. And that and that was the story of the fight. It was like if that eye poke doesn't happen, then he probably wins by you name decision. And I was pretty pissed off. So I, oh, I'm kind of well, lost. Also, there, Chris what? Weidman just lying about getting eye poked. He did not get eye poked one fucking time in that fight. He got punched in the fucking eye, eye like Figgy eye. Moreno four. But he's just a fucking liar and a scumbag. No, so fuck Chris Weidman. Got I got to get that out on the record. Chris Weidman is a fucking douchebag. So what? So. I, oh, Fighters got poked in the end, and that's the reason why they didn't like call it. He off. did when? When did Chris Wyman get fucking poked in the eye? When? Show me one fucking time that motherfucker got poked in the ended, eye. The one that ended the fight was Silva poked him at the same exact time Wyman poked. Billy, stop him. it! I, no, Billy, stop it! I'm done with this. I, I had no, I had no skin on the game in that. You're fight. just, yeah, like, you're full of shit right now, though. Like, like, you're not, you're really trying to be argumentative, and there's no argument. Like he. Did, Chris Weidman did not get fucking poked in the eye. That is a bold faced lie. He got what's poked your, in the eye. The real was it change, as hard? Billy? No. <laughs> what would be your rule of change, Billy? Rule change? I, I, to be honest with you, I don't want to see a rule change because every time we do a fucking rule change in MMA, it's like they're doing the hesitation pump fake on it. And it's like sometimes they want to call it and then other times they don't want to call it. It could be and any I, rule. It could be a timing rule. It could be a judging rule. It could be anything. It's just what would you change? What I thought it was the first one's a warning. Uh, if it happens right after, then you got to take a point again. So I thought that's the reason why uh, Herbert Burns got a point taken away because not only did he do the eye pokes, both the eye pokes were within like fucking 15, 20 seconds of each other. So it's like you got to take a point or the dude's just not even going to acknowledge it. But then when you have other fights like Cedric Dumas versus Nathan Ruzi above, it was kind of one of those ones where like, the result, they kind of want Ruzi above to win, hence why he's in Atlantic City, fighting right in his backyard, theoretically, since he's training out the Philly gym. And they're like, are we really going to give Dumas an eye poke injury? Nah. And so then, What <laughs> rule are you talking about changing or not changing? Hey, it's I, it's I, all I right. I kind of I kind of cut Mills off earlier on the whole uh, the eye poke thing. So, Mills, do you have anything to add on the, the eye pokes? And what would be your rule change since Philly doesn't really have one? Yeah, I'm glad y'all just crucified him for everything that <laughs> I wouldn't have. And man, y'all now I see, man, damn, if I'm like that, y'all double teamed him, but y'all he deserved it because exactly he didn't come with anything. So yeah, on to me. There's no clear right. rule though. So so look, there's this is a topic. There's so many the rules hypothetical in the question. They just ask you, you, they just ask anything, you yeah, change. any rule, any one rule. And you had like nothing you gotta, to say. You got to walk straight out. You can do anything. You, you, just anything. you just debated. You just debated. You're just like, I just don't like that this is like one right, thing. And right, then you just right. like talked about. <laughs> right. For, for five minutes, like he was on the Maury show. And then they asked you, <laughs> what, right. name We're any rule that really you want to change. Go ahead. Got it. My bad. My bad. So There's I'll no nice rule, though, from the beginning. I thought that was the reason why the conversation even started because we don't know what the rules are, bro. For every fight, it fucking changes. Billy, okay, that's what kinda, he's. If you were in charge, right. if you could change any rule, like, it doesn't like, matter. Like, I would say knee, knee opponents while they're on the ground. I'm fine with that. Like, cool. Like, you could kick somebody in the face if they're on the ground. That's a rule change, Billy. Protect like, you could you could have said anything. You could have said face. anything. I agree. That's a good. But you change. literally said nothing, and you just wanted to debate with somebody about an eye poke thing. So cool. We got a podcast to do, so let's do it. So with that being said, the one rule change that I would do is this: plain and simple, man. All this eye poke shit, throw it out the window. Give you two options. Look, you poke my eye. Cool. I poke your eye back, or else you get a point taken. Say, pick which one. Which one you want? <laughs> point blank. He says, point blank. I get a, I get a free fucking three stooges on you. Or I take a yeah. point. I like I like it. 
Fuck. There you go. It's just, it's, hey, and then the dude opens his eye, and you know, we it's like a free it, throw. Poke one time. And it's like, cool, poke back, poke back. If not, take I that love it. Let's keep it rolling. So you basically you don't you, you don't uh fault the other guy for getting the like the poke back, right? So that's it's it's even Steven with the, there you the go. get back poke. Yeah, you get knee in the head, you get knee in the head, right? Right, knee him back. Eye for eye, you know what I mean? Apple for apple. You know, back in those days, Aladdin and shit. Ali li ba 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 ba. moving on real quick, Mills, why I have you here. What's your favorite prelim fight of this week? God damn, favorite prelim fighter this week, man. It got to be, I mean, I don't know. I ain't looking at the prelims right now, but um, I hope this fight is not on the prelim. It can't be on the prelim. It can't be on the prelim. But um, is the is the Morgan Cherrier and Cheppy fight on the prelim? It, wait, let me see. I was about to say, okay, let me. All right, cool. Now I'm looking. All That's right, cool. There we go. All right, these things make it better. Go back to that, uh, the, cool. Oh, uh, shit. Wow. This is... Whew. I thought that fight got canceled. Ali Tang and Victor Hugo? God damn, I didn't even get the prediction. The PFL Fuck, this prelims is, are better than the UFC. This is hard, bro. <laughs> you just... Hey, I ain't even going to front. You just asked me what's my favorite fight on the prelims. Man, I ain't, I ain't going to lie. I don't like none of these fights on the fucking prelims. You don't man. like Court McGee, Alex Moreno? Man, bro. Like, all right, y'all want to get... Going? Y'all got to get me on. Man, I really got to talk about Caesar right. Almeida. Fuck it. Fuck it. Gene Matsuma, Matsumoto. Uh, I'm hyped on the prospect. I think he's going to be able to get it done uh, in there. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, you, shit. That, yeah, that, bro. I, two fighters I like on the whole prelims, all right? I like Cesar Almeida and I like Gene Matsumoto. And I like Pierre Rodriguez. So, yeah, actually, uh, those are three bets that I got right there. Besides that, don't make me talk about what's my favorite fight on these bum ass fights, bro. All right, I'll go to Billy next since he wanted to talk so much. What's your favorite fight? I Billy? actually like the uh I, I actually think the PFL prelims is damn near better than the fucking UFC prelims. What is life? I, I knew he was gonna say that. Bro. I knew he was gonna Somebody say call that. that before I the show. knew he was gonna say that, bro. Like like I you just, actually you like just the make it so easy on this uh UFC prelims. Uh both underdogs are coming off of a little bit of a time frame, but both underdogs have made us money before. I mean, we got Dick Norm. Every time Dick Norm's on the TV, I'm who did. I mean, how can you not? But she's fighting Jerain Duran, I mean, and uh, she's coming off that three-year layoff. Um, that fight could definitely be a little bit greasier than the intended line. Could Jerain Duran, I mean, look like she did before? That layoff, if she does, I mean, how is she a betting underdog favorite against Norma Dumont? And then the other one, Cynthia Calvillo versus uh, P Rod. Um, I P Rod's just not somebody I've been high on, man. I mean, I feel like Cynthia Calvillo has given a good run at it. Uh, she hasn't really done too much of recent besides just make fights close. It's one of those ones where like. She isn't getting she isn't getting her ass beat, but a lot of these fights could literally be coin flipped the other way. I thought she won against Lupita Godinez in their last fight. That was on the Pierre out of Tanya card. And then the Nina Nunez fight. I thought she also won that one. So both of those were split decisions. And uh she's on a five fight losing streak, but I don't think that's indicative of the way she's been fighting. I think she's been kind of turning it up more volume for Cynthia Calvillo than what we were really accustomed to. Um, I think both of the chick fights in the prelims are a uh, good betting opportunity spots. DC. So there's actually, I, what Billy said about Norma is church. Billy, that's the real shit you ever said. You have to tune in for that tater. And I'm really interested to see what Jermaine looks like after the three year layoff. Um, but to me, the fights that I see being the best and the ones that like I kind of they're kind of like striker versus grappler somewhat are Dylan Budka and Cesar Almeida and Dan Argetta and uh, Jean Matsumoto. Those are the ones I'm kind of looking forward to the most as far as like skill and like display of skill. Like I want to see uh, Dylan Budka if he can just like ragdoll and like hulk smash this dude or like if almeida chins him so i'm kind of excited for that one and our get it too like matsumoto is this like 24 year old kid he's like a prospect 
fought a decent level of competition uh, and is debuting against Argetta and he's the favorite. So that's kind of, that's kind of wild. And yeah, I just want to see if Argetta can like, you know, either get his wrestling going and just ragdoll him like crazy or like see if he's made any kind of improvements on the feed. So those are the two fights that I'm the most excited about. But I mean, yeah, as far as the chick fights go, it's Norma and Jermaine. Like that's decently high level and like, Norma's got a crazy dumper and Jermaine like pretty much hits like a fucking man. So it's, <laughs> it, I think that's going to be a fucking wild one. Right on, right on. Uh, normally I ask this question when we end up getting double digit fighters fighting behind the good old red, white, and blue. Give me your thoughts on some of the fighters and what price tags are you liking so far out of these American fighters in the home of the brave section, boys? Mills, I'll start with you. All right, so who's repping the red, white, and blue? Can you let me know, please? There's thirteen it's out of the twenty. Not a lot. There's thirteen out of the twenty six. It's half half the fighters on the card are actually fighting out of. You know, Got it. Can you please put up the screen of the images so I can see the fighters and stuff? You know, to give more visuals of. All right. Cool. Da, 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 damn, that don't look too American. Can you show me the main card? I can tell you real quick. Uh, I don't Budka, have... Budka, Dan Argetta, uh, Cynthia, um, Court McGee, Alex Morono, Trevor Peak, Charlie Campbell. Um, mm. I can't remember if Ignacio. I think, no, I, th- I think uh, Christos Yagos. No, he's, from, he's from Chile or something. Like that. Yeah, Christos Yagos. Alex Hernandez. Damon All Jackson. right, I got it. 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 So out of the home of the Braves, man. I mean, come on, man. Let's go ahead and get it started with one of the most like American folk tale names that you guys can get out there. Alex Moreno, aka, you know, I don't sure. I don't got no aka for him. I don't even know how I just did that. But uh, so I'll take Alex Moreno. I think he mm-hmm. gets it done. Um. Home of the Brave, Brandon Allen, he be rocking that David Crocky hat. I think he gets upset by Chris Curtis, who's the American's people the hero. Davey Crockett. Yeah, All-American main event. Yeah, he said the know. Davy Crockett. Um, let me see. Davey. All-American. Oh, my guy, Charlie Campbell. I got Charlie Campbell. Charlie Campbell and Trevor Peak, that's going to be uh, one for the home of the Brave. And I think uh, Charlie Campbell's going to be waving that flag out there. So I like uh, I like Moreno. I like Charlie Campbell, and then I like Chris Curtis to go ahead and win it for the home of the brave, red, white, and blue. Uh, for somebody that doesn't have many, you know, didn't have one, had about five or six of them to, to finish out. TC, what do you got on this one? On the home of the brave, I don't know. I'm not getting invested really in any of the home of the brave fights, so to speak. Trevor Peak and Charlie Campbell going to be – Shots fired. Shots Trevor, Trevor, fired, you guys Trevor Peak, Charlie Campbell going to be a good old – all-American gravel scratcher. Um, some Someone is going to get fucking starched in that one, I think. Uh, but, yeah, all-American main event. It's fucking tough, dude. I'm I'm trying to stay away from the main event. Um, but, yeah, as far as the uh, as far as the the hometown heroes are concerned, yeah, I'm not – again, I'm kind of – it's kind of wait and see for me on Budka and Argetta. I do kind of like both of them to win, but – I kind of want to see what I got, man. So, yeah, as far as the uh, – and I do like Alex Morono, too. That's all. That's an All-American event, him and Court McGee. But, yeah, give me Morono, and, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, people are going to have a tough time trying to pick out which American is going to win in the, the All-Mills Bowl, the, the Trevor Peak versus Charlie Campbell. But he likes both of them, so. That's uh, actually kind of a tough fight to call. I know all people are all over Charlie Campbell's nutsack this week. I just don't know, man. I, I think that's one. Just, he's just likable. That's all it is. He's Dude, just it's it's just closer than I think people want to like. I know Peak is an easy target. Like he's a fucking bumpkin, and like he he's got a real thick southern drawl, and he kind of sounds like a retard and fights like a dumbass. But like, I don't know, man. I I think it's close. Billy, what are your thoughts? Um, I feel like the difference between the two is. Trevor Peak, there's a lot of unknowns, but I know what I'm getting from Charlie Campbell. He's going to bite down that mouthpiece, and he's going to strike, and he has the ability to easily 
easily get takedowns on Trapper Peak in this spot. I actually don't mind a uh, fight to start round two at minus 140. And uh, maybe a Charlie Campbell sub prop in there. I mean, Charlie Campbell to win by submission plus 600. Yes. I think yes. if you're back in the Charlie Campbell side, um, one of the main reasons why you'd be backing him is I think there's a huge wrestling advantage over Trevor Peak. Uh, everybody thinks that fight's just going to be two motherfuckers slinging it out on the feet. Bro, we've been backing Charlie Campbell since the Bellator days, bro. He's going to try to offensively wrestle a little bit here, get in that top position and uh, kind of control the fight. I think he's more worried about the win than the 50K bonus. Um, but if I had to say home of the brave, man, shit, I'll be the one to say, fuck out of here with this Brandon Allen slander. I get it. Chris Curtis is our guy. But, bro, Chris Curtis has not been fighting like Chris Curtis. Uh, the action man has not been throwing a whole lot of action. Um, I thought that Mark andre Barry split decision win. Bullshit. Uh, I was on a Mark andre Barry by decision there. It was like 500. Um, and I haven't been too impressed by a Chris Curtis's run of recent, man. Uh, it, ever since that Jack Hermanson fight, it feels like he's been turned down in form. But um, this is a winnable fight for him. I get it. Uh, Brandon Allen, he lost, uh, He beat Brandon Allen the first time. Brandon Allen, his last loss was to Chris Curtis. But it's very rare do you get a fighter on a six-fight win streak at the middleweight class, and they're on the come up, and you're getting them damn near two-to-one odds. Uh, I like Brandon Allen a lot this weekend. Right on. Well, now we'll start rolling through the card. Just give me whether you think it's going to go the distance or finish. Um, if you have something to say, you want to talk about a fighter, feel free. If we happen to fly over your plant the flag fighter, your 1-800 fraud alert, or a fight you even have on the blacklist, go ahead and let it rip. First fight on the card, Yo, Melissa Mullins versus Nora Cornell. TC, I'll start with you. So this is not my plant the flag fighter. I want to make that clear. But I have bet Nora Cornole, <laughs> and I think she does knock out Melissa Mullins. I think she's the better striker, and uh, unless Mullins gets takedowns, I think she's going to get fucked up. And Cornole can get put in some bad spots, but she's got this weird ability to kind of get out of them. They're close to the same age, and, yeah, I think Mullins is trash on the feet, and she has a dodgy chin. So, yeah, give me Cornole at plus 270, and, uh, yeah, ITD. Mills. Yo, bro, I don't know what the fuck this guy was drinking early on in the morning, but this guy is so off base with that pick. I'm on Mullins all day, man. Give me her. When it comes down to it, she's the way better fighter than Cornrow. Cornrow got that last fight gifted to her. She lost versus Jocelyn Edwards. Hear me out on this. I'm going to go ahead and predict it right now. I guarantee you Melissa Mullins wins, and if she doesn't, I'll, I'll bet whatever Two Cent wants to bet. Because uh, we we taking this win by victory. Victory by all means. Guaranteed. She's getting the body bag. Sounds on like a bet. What's the bet, boys? What's the bet? <laughs> Billy, what are your thoughts? Is that, is that, is that, was that a planted flag fighter I hear? You sound and pretty convincing, what, sir. Trust me. So, look. All right. Nah, but it's one of those things. Who, the, who, who is this bitch a, beat again? Who is right. this fucking Euro trash bitch beat again? No, nah, I, I will back yeah, up. Just remember Mills, that, though, bro. Just remember I don't just remember feel all like, this energy. I don't feel like I've gotten luckier ever. You know when they say in MMA betting, sometimes the bounces go your way, sometimes they don't. Man, that was the luckiest bet I've ever placed in my life. Was on Nora Cronole winning that fight against uh, Jocelyn Edwards in her last one. You know she what? That, that's been that's seven. been a common narrative. But go back and watch that fight. Nora Cornole yeah. got more stri landed more strikes, landed the more damaging strikes, and she got out of those bad grappling positions and ended up in the dominant positions at the end of the rounds. And Bro, that's why she snuck it. It was a close fight, but like this whole Jocelyn Edwards got robbed. Like I don't know, man. I th I think people are a little salty, Bro, you and I think that's why there's all this. I think that's why you there's all this tough guy energy on this jobber. Melissa Mullins, who got <laughs> fucking dropped by Irene Alexeva, about to get dropped by Nora Cornole and fucked up. You gonna make me plant my flag on this French bitch, aren't you? <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. You I better. Flag you better. Her, bro. You shouldn't be in any grappling about. positions with Jocelyn fucking Edwards, the jobber of jobbers in this division. Um, the girl that you just shitted on. Jocelyn Edwards uh, got a lot more UFC experience than this fucking British bitch. 
<laughs> yeah, but the Russian Ronda, man, uh, she, she's going to be fighting again, and she looked really good against Stephanie Egger. So, like, I'm not going to shit on her too much about that. It's just, bro, if you're having close fights with Jocelyn Edwards and you're getting out grappled by Jocelyn Edwards, big red flag. Price tag's a little bit too wide, but I think Mullins dominates her. And it, I, honestly, call me crazy, man. This could, I, I think she dominates her to the point where it's probably going to be a ground and pound knockout. I'm, 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 man, she could finish her by sub as well, man. Uh, she's she's vicious. She's been getting some belts leveling up, and like I, I was just so happy that uh two cent felt that way because I'm 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 overly convinced on Bullens in this spot. I played her when she came out at a minus two sixty. Now she's up to a minus three thirty. Made money with her last time against Alex Aliceva. What she do? Man, come on now, man. Same thing we're going to do on this one, man. She just got married, got a new name. She's married to the game, married to the fight game, that is. Guaranteed we're getting this win. Melissa Mullins, it is. All right, moving on. Mills, I'm glad I, Mills, this, I'm glad I fucked up the graphics. What was her name before Mullins? Dixon. Oh, so Melissa it was Melissa Dixon. Dixon. That was her name? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, yeah. I'm telling you, man. Shorty... Shorty, uh, you know, now Mullins used to be named Dixon. <laughs> For her being 6 and 0, oh, it isn't anything. This is like a total pick em, great, and one bitch is like is minus 350. That, is, that ain't right. That ain't right. Oh, bro, that one girl. That one girl that she fought before the UFC, her name was Dyra. Which, which Melissa, which Melissa like Dixon performance has you convinced that she's just minus 350 against North Korea? Let me finish. Let me finish. The Dyra. Yeah, it, suck, it the sucks Dara when people cut you off, seen. don't it, Billy? It's that just sucks, don't it? I thought the interesting in the UFC against Rendon was the fight that really convinced me. We saw Dara fight on the card against Rendon a couple weeks ago. She was like a minus 250 favorite. And uh that girl like trash. has a lot of look had punches. a close fight with fucking Tits McGee. Got all busted oh, up by that, Tits that, McGee. That that fight kind of convinced me enough. That hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys. It's, it's the first fight, smoking. women's fight. We got a podcast to do. We got a podcast. To do. Moving on. TC, do, Budka versus Almeida. Does it go the distance? Mm, bucket decision. Mills? I got I got Cesar Almeida in that one, man. I think he gets it done. Uh, one of the guys to beat Alex Pereira. You know what the decision is on this one. Bucca opened up a minus 165 all the way down to a minus 140. Cesar Almeida was able to stuff takedowns on the contender series. I had the guy going against him. He wasn't able to get it done. He owes me. He's getting it in this one. I actually think he could finish him maybe late round three. But I got him winning on scorecards. We ain't betting on wrestlers and grapplers no more unless you're Marab, Curtis Blades, or uh, Tatiana Suarez. Shout out. Thanks for the context on that one, Billy. Uh, is he a wrestler? Yeah, but, uh, you know, my thoughts in theory is, I mean, Baltimore, Maryland wrestling? They ain't true wrestling, man. The demolition fight team? I mean, uh, I, I think there's some chinks in the armor there. Uh, I haven't been impressed by the level of competition, and uh, I think Cesar Almeida gets him. Am raised in this one. I don't know if it's by you name decision or if it's going to be a first round knockout. Metamoto Argeta, TC. Uh, I'm kind of torn between Argeta decision and Argeta submission. I'm going to say Argeta submits this motherfucker. This dude, he's he's a decent like regional prospect, but Argeta has got the experience and the grappling upside. So yeah, give me Argeta submission. No. Yeah, I like Matsumoto a lot, man. I've seen him in LFA. Um, you know, undefeated prospect in there. I think he can win by sub in this spot. Uh, fast striker, too. Argetta, uh, he's he's been decent. You know what I mean? Uh, last two fights coming in no contest. Uh, wrestler out there tries to push the pace. Uh, coming from Cub Swanson's camp. I think this might be a spot to where he looks, probably puts his best foot forward. But I don't think that's going to be enough, man. I got Matsumoto in the uh, two-leg parlay. Yo, shout out once again for the little bit of context, Billy. Um, I, I don't have the same confidence as Mills, but I, I think this is a match in spot. Uh, Dan Argueta has kind of been benefited from some level of competition type of fights. I mean, Miles John and Ronnie Lawrence going into those fight weeks, people thought they were better than Dan Argueta, but Dan Argueta showed kind of just under undervalued by the market of recent 
Um, I feel like, granted, when you see the plus price tag at first, it kind of attracts you towards Dan Argueta. But doing some more research on this kid from uh, Brazil, I think he might be legit. Man, like if you look at his record, uh, he's going, he's going the distance. He's winning by guillotines. He's fucking people up on the feet. <laughs> it's like, what more do you not want to see? Fourteen and zero. He's going to decision. He's gotten rear naked chokes, mounts, and uh, fought in LFA. I mean, I, I'm not going against the kid here in this spot. I, I really sorry not to cut you off. I really do think this is a good fight to see, though. Like what I was saying earlier about the judges valuing damage. This is a, a fight where we really could see that come into play. Like. Uh, Argetta's wrestling versus maybe some damage from Matsumoto. So I'll be interested to see how that scored. That's one of the reasons why I kind of like Gene Matsumoto here in this spot. I just don't think Dan Argueta is going to be able to get those takedowns. If he's not able to get the takedowns, we've seen time and time again he starts to falter late in the fights. Kelvio Rodriguez, TC. I flipped the coin last night on Aaron's show, and it's been pretty good with these uh, mid to low level chick fights. So it said Calvillo. I'm going to say Calvillo decision. No. Belly? This is like the ugly dog week. Man, usually the stuff. That you try to get on your resume of betting on a dog is uh, not the 30 fucking six year old straw weight, but man, give me Cynthia Calvillo here in this spot, man. She's been making fights a lot greasier than what the intended betting lines have been. I mean, she was a plus 220 against Lupita Godinez, took her nail tooth and coffin to a fucking split decision against Nina uh, Azarov or Nina Nunes, they call her nowadays. Uh, she was a betting favorite. Nina Nunes took her straight nail to the coffin. What I'm getting that towards here is when Cynthia Calvillo shows up and she's ready to go and she signed on the dotted line and not on short notice. I mean, she makes a lot of these fights very, very, very close. Level of competition is definitely in her favor. Uh, she's probably seen a million Pierre Rodriguez's in the gym. Dog or pass spot, man. Give me Cynthia Calvillo. All right. Uh, Dumont Drain Duran me, DC. I think the Iron Lady knocks her out. I think I, Carol Carol Hosa dropped her um, with the same shit. So, so did Megan Anderson. Jermaine gonna gonna one two two piece her knock her out. Mills thoughts on uh, yeah. the Cobio fight and the Dumont fight? Yeah, uh, Pierre Rodriguez. I think she wins uh, that one. Um, I actually like that price tag at a minus one thirty. The the Norma Dumont fight, I like that one too, man. Made money with her last fight out. Um, price tag dropped on her. Uh, I get it. Uh, ran to me, you know. Maybe if she was in the cage in the arena working out, but man, she been on a four year layoff, got a baby. Y'all betting on a lady that's been off for four years, forty years old with Not a baby. On her. Come on now, like give me Norma Dumont in this spot. I think uh, definitely it goes the distance in this one as well. Billy, you you. You hold me there with boys, uh, but no, I, I'm going. I'm going another way, man. It's women's MMA, bro. I, I think uh, age kind of gets exaggerated too much in women's MMA. I mean, we're watching a co-main event fight with Liz Carmouche. She was the first chick to ever fought in the UFC. The bitch is 40 years old, and she don't look at age of 40 at all. Uh, I think the striking's too. I don't think that Norma Dumont can compete in the striking here, bro. If, this is Jerain Duran, I mean, that we saw prior to her leaving. Bro, she was throwing bombs on these chicks, man. Uh, I, I, there's just a level of competition. Uh, I love Norma Dumont. She's one of my favorite fighters. But, I mean, eight straight fights going to the judges' scorecards. And we're telling, you're telling me we're going to the judges' scorecards again. I'm going to lean towards the striker here. Yeah, shout out to Peyton, man. I just watched on the little uh... – you know, recording cam that you set up in the house for the babies. I just watched them roll over for the first time. But uh, Dude. back to the podcast. We got a podcast to do. Um, Court McGee, Alex Moreno, TC. Does this get three bells? I'm going to say Moreno finishes them. I could see a decision, though. I just, Court McGee's durability has been starting to wane. And yeah, I see, I'm going to say Moreno clubs and subs them. 
Mills? Uh, yeah, I don't think this one goes the distance. I think Moreno wins uh, round two, round three. Billy Mills. Yeah, for a little bit, um, I thought that Morono's last loss was kind of like a, a like, but the way that boy Buckley looked last week in fucking Atlantic City, shit, man, I'll give him credit. He made it all three rounds with him. <laughs> That's the way Buckley's going to fight. He went three rounds with him. Um, I, I don't think this is the same stylistic matchup. The only time you've really seen Alex Morono loses against i don't want to say it. i'm gonna say it man that's athletic uh fucking spanish and black people and uh this is a whitey on whitey matchup i think alexander uh Morono the audacity the whitey on whitey i'm just saying bro. billy like, with the wildest take yet yeah, after all this shit i fucking said i see why twitter added saying. a character limit too look Look at the losses from Alex Morona. Joe Queen Buckley, fast, black. Santiago, uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio, fast, Brazilian. Anthony Pettis, at that time, This fast, eugenics uh, take is wild. <laughs> hey, hey, Chaos Williams, first round knockout, fast, black, athletic. But you put him in those whitey versus whitey matchups, Tim Means, second round guillotine. Matthew Selmasberger, you name decision. Mickey Gall, decision. David Zawada, decision, unanimous. Reese McKee, decision, unanimous. Like, you put him in these whitey versus whitey matchups, man. Uh, he looks like the great himself. The great white is his nickname. So uh, don't put him in the whitey versus whitey matchups. He's the great white for a reason. But his last name's Morono. Isn't he, like, half Hispanic or Latino? Right, right, right. He, he got to have I would imagine What's if going on? is the is the great white, you must be white. I'm not sure for this one, baby. You can be white skinned, but you cannot be white. You know what I mean? Like, he, he probably is Hispanic, too. So, if Hispanic is on your claws, like, something? something. Yeah, I get, mean, you might, get, you might get, have a point. Get, we get don't that got editing. Get, get those editing uh, buttons ready. <laughs> it's all right. Fuck it. Trevor P. Charlie Campbell. TC, you know. I feel like one of them is getting starched. Of course, it'll probably go to decision now, but yeah. Matter, but it will not surprise me at all to see him looking up at the lights. I think Peak might be tougher, but we're going to find out. I'll take Campbell being more skilled, knocks him out. Yeah, man. Um, A lot of people like Trevor Peak. Uh, um, you know, I get it, the way that he fights and stuff. You know, he's entertaining, kind of like a Nate Land wearing stuff. Um, I was on the opposite side of his fight last time out. Uh, hey, he went the whole 15 minutes in that fight and didn't look that bad in there. Uh, this is the thing, though. I like Charlie Campbell. Uh, he made his UFC debut on the Contender Series against Chris Duncan. He was whooping that kid's ass. And then Chris Duncan just rocked him with one, and he dropped and fell. Yes, same exact thing can happen in this one. Charlie Campbell could be letting off a clip on Trevor Peak, and then Trevor Peak pulls out that little deuce-deuce shooter. Bam! Knocks him out just like that. Trust me, it can happen. But I ain't here for that. I got Charlie Campbell. Played him when he came out at a minus two. 10 uh i believe he came down on the price tag and yes i do believe hey the submission is live um shout out to who was it uh brandon olivas was uh talking about that earlier on in his podcast billy's on it too so hey man i actually think that's something that can happen in this one but the best prediction is fight not go the distance in this one that's crazy really? you said that because I was just about to say some dumb shit fuck that nigga that <laughs> you said we were both on the same shit so Never mind. Let me take that back. But these are one of those fights where I feel like the Dana White Contender Series is such a unique moment of both fighters are showing up inside the cage with the opportunity to get signed by Dana White, but you have to get a finish. And I feel like the way Charlie Campbell fought in that Dana White Contender Series is not the way he usually fights. He's usually like a lot more controlled and uh, uses his offensive wrestling in some spots. I remember in Bellator, we made some good cash on Charlie Campbell on the prelims uh, back when he was signed with that promotion. And um, if Charlie Campbell, I, I just got to watch a couple of interviews and make sure he says he wants to wrestle. Because if he wants to wrestle, he could easily take down Trevor P. And uh, I actually think this fight goes over the total uh, one and a half. I actually like fight to start round two on FanDuel at minus 140. I think for Charlie Campbell, his path to victory is extending this fight in the second and third rounds. 
the, actually that fuck i know i just said inside the distance but that decision is sneaky because what's crazy is like everyone sees peak is this just like wild dude that has no defense and he doesn't but he's pretty fucking tough like when has trevor peak been knocked out like in recently like and yeah campbell hits hard but like i don't know i i, I could see it go in the distance and they're both just knocking the living shit out of each other i bet it's a nasty price tag too but yeah i don't know i just it's it's hard to see Campbell not being just like really a lot more accurate. While you're on the mic, PC Brisky versus Walker. Ah, God, Walker decision. Mills. Millie. No, I got it. I got it. Um, hell no, not a walker decision, man. Uh, I think he gets it done. Uh, ground and pound win in this one. I think he gets it done in the second round. Uh, the price tag did come down though. Uh, he's down to like a minus 280 in here. Well, uh, the price tag only went down because he's been sold to us as Johnny Walker's older brother. We ain't never seen Johnny Walker at this price tag in some fucking years. So seeing his older brother that we never heard of in the year 2024 does raise us some causes of concerns. But Lucas Bresky's, uh, I think the biggest thing here in this fight is going to be the takedown defense of Lucas Bretsky. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, the method of victory for the KOTKO is plus 125 for Walter Walker. But if he gets that knockout, I think it's by ground and pound. He ain't by standing up on the feet. I actually think the submission prop at 12 to 1 odds for a heavyweight grappler who does submissions, who we know for Johnny Walker's main wrestling partner, I would imagine, I mean, the 12 to 1 odds for a fucking sub prop at the heavyweight division is just a little bit disrespectful. But these are probably one of those type of fights where you end up betting inside the distance and you end up thinking, how the fuck? It's just like inside the distance is minus 110, but him to win by submissions plus 1,200? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I can just see fat boy like lay and pray. But yeah, he's the better wrestler for sure. And you you hit the nail on the head with that Bresky uh, takedown defense. But like, he Walker or Walker, whatever, he is trash on the feet, man. I could see Bresky. I don't know, man. This please let this fight fall off. It's so fucking bad. I actually like the fight though a little bit. Uh, at the heavyweight division, I mean, uh the dude that he fought in let, Titan let me FC. Your plugs now, really, because that Lord, I want the shit you smoking, dog. Bahamanda. No, I, I'm excited for the, fight, the dude that he fought in the fight was a former UFC fighter. So, like, granted, it wasn't the best level of competition, but it was a, it, it was a fight. It was a good fight to judge. I don't think fucking Alex Nicholson and fucking Lucas Bresky are too far off from each other. I mean, would I rather have seen him fight Jake Collier last year? Hell yeah! But uh, we'll take a second best. Bahamanda's Jagos TC. Bahamanda's decision. No. Uh, yeah, man. Bahamanda's going to get this finished, man. Um, yeah, man. The days of the UFC NFTs is back. The silver striker that was worth $60 that I pulled. He's going to make that price tag go up with this KO win in this one, man. I think he's going to have one of those uh, flash knockouts that he did on Roosevelt Roberts or with Christian Giagos. But he left a bad taste in our mouth last time out against Ludovic Klein. But that's Ludovic Klein, though, man. Um, minus 350 on the price tag out here. You know, I'm sticking with my gut. I'm sticking with my guns. Not my guy. Not my guy. He's not, he's not, he's not there yet, you know. Uh, definitely not there, but it's it's my gut pick. Uh, I love Ignacio Bahama Mondes. I love the way that he strikes out there. Uh, his physique for the division is good. Uh, Christian Diago is going to be live in that first round. Um, but you know, as the fight goes, Bahamanda should be the cleaner striker, to, the street cleaner striker to get it done. So uh, I like Anasio Bahamandes. That would be one leg for the uh, locker room pod parlay. If you guys are all in on that one, we could uh, put that in as one leg right now. Billy, your thoughts? You know me, man. Uh, shouts to my man, Christos Giagos. Uh, I think it was the beginning. It was last year's March Madness. Uh, I had a couple March Madness losses, 
And my back was against the wall, man. My back was against the wall. And we had Jagos at like plus 150 full unit. Me and Nick were both on stream. And we both said, I think Jagos is the side. And Slaughter texted me and he goes, are you guys really betting Christos Giagos? And we're like, yeah. And he goes out there and gets the first round. I remember. But I remember. I don't, I don't like the stylistic <laughs> matchup here. I actually think Badamonda is, um, you know, on FanDuel, how they give out the round two, three by knockout or round two, three by sub. It might be one of those where you might want to mix and match because as much as I, my initial thoughts is I think he knocks him out in the second or third round. Man. Chris Josh Giagos just finds a way to get submitted in fucking fights, bro. I don't know what it is, but if you look at his losses, man, a lot of his losses are really by sub. So I take it to Noah throwing him in the parlay. <laughs> Moving in. Oh, no, I love No, he likes Bahamondas. It would probably be off the spot. Yeah, he likes Bahamondas. Bay versus Morgan Shazir. TC. Yeah, give me uh, give me Captain Morgan. I actually think he knocks Chepe out first or second round. I just think he's faster. I think he's – Chepe is good. Chepe is a good fighter, and he's tough, um, but he does leave himself open for counters, and Chari is a good counter striker. So, yeah, give me Captain Morgan by knockout. Mills. Aye, aye. Aye, me wants me gold. Me wants me UFC gold. That's why I'm here now. That's why I came from the cage, Warriors. Give me Morgan Sharier, a.k.a. the last pirate, man. This guy, I've been following him now for a while now, man. Um, He has the whole country behind him. Uh, he has a backing behind him. But the only thing is this. He doesn't have those wins yet that he needs uh, to get the people talking about him. His record, you guys see it on there. Uh, fight IQ, uh, I give him a B. Fight resume, I give B plus uh, finish ability. I give him a C plus when it comes down to it, though. Overall fighter. He's the man. Price tag came down. Uh, he went from a minus 150 minus 145 down to a minus again. Shari Air, I believe, is as advertised in the UFC. You're getting him at a minus 120. Hear me out on this. After he gets this win, you're never going to get him. Look that lower again just you know what i'm doing on this one i'm betting on a pirate let's go ahead and get it morgan Charrier for the win with that being said though Cheppy morisell is a dog bro i've been i've been backing him and watching him from lfa uh before he came to the ufc after his last win in the U uh, lfa i was like all right he should be penciled in in the ufc represent shy town chicago Chirac. got those killers with him he's out there training out there um you seen what he did in the ufc who did he knock out Shit, I don't know. I think it was Trevor Peak. Uh, who? What, what happened in his last fight? I think uh, he finished Jack Jenkins in there too as well. Uh, he's a dog, bro. And this is one. I like both these fighters, but I had to plant my flag for the for the guy that I knew a little bit longer. And trust me when I say this, that flag easily could have been planted for Chepe. Easily. Um, but uh, so yeah, I'm I'm on there to tell you guys like this. If you guys want a good dog on there. Chepe is that, but I think Morgan should be able to keep it out on the feet, uh, use his range, use his distance, and not let Chepe get close and attack that body. Uh, che uh, Morgan was going deadly at his last opponent with body kicks, body kicks, body kicks. The next thing you know, what he do? Bam! Kicked him in his body and knocked him out. Um, but this is this is the main event. This is the people fight of the night. Um, yeah, and this is the fight to where. Our, it's two fighters. I wouldn't want to see them fight this earlier on in their career, but it's not earlier on in their career because they both got experience and stuff like that. But talking about this fight because I like both fighters, I can make cases for both of them winning in there too as well. Um, as well, but yeah, man, I, I said enough on this one. Billy, this is one of those ones, man, where I got to take my fandom out of it. I'm a big Morgan Chair guy, but. Uh, this goes back to his Cage Warriors days, bro. He's fighting real close with these opponents that I don't think that are that good. And if you look at Chepe Marshall, man, he's fought for a guy that's only fought two fights in the UFC. This motherfucker didn't fought the who's who, bro. Sean Suriato, Steve Garcia, 
Peterson Brito, Bryce Mitchell, Gregor Gillespie. Those are his losses, bro. He's only two fights into the UFC career. Training out a team elevation. I think he's going to have a better gas tank, better cardio. It's just, does Morgan, does Morgan Shire, is it the guy that we saw in this UFC debut in Paris where he's throwing fucking bombs and volume the whole entire time? Or is it going to be the guy that I saw in Cage Warriors that was low volume and just waited for the right shot? Because if he race, if he waits for the right shot in this one, it ain't going to come. Uh, give me Chepe by decision. So I will say this. <clears throat> I uh, He does. Chari has a lot of losses. But if you go back and look at it, dude, his the last like three, four, maybe even five losses, you go and look back at those opponents. They're all on like win streaks and they have like really good regional records and like they're they're pretty good cage warriors fighters. And I actually think that one against that Irish dude, I think you can make a case Chari won that. I just don't like Chepe's chin, man. I, I just think he's tough, but he has been knocked out three times. And that's the thing, like he has really good losses, but he does not have really fucking great wins at all. And I just think Chari is a lot better than Jack Jenkins and Trevor Peak. I just think he's a smarter fighter and he's a way sharper striker. I, I think Chepe is going to get chin checked. But he is a good fighter. He's wild, he's definitely, though. Chepe's a, definitely a better fighter than I've given him credit for in the past. So I'll say that. I think it'll be a good win for Morgan. It's just wild, though, TC, that Morgan Chair hey, is hold on, hold on. I uh, give minus you- price tag at 1-8 by decisions. Like, that's just wild to me, bro. He's 1-8 in, in decisions, and we're paying chalk price tag on it. It, it doesn't sit right with me. Because you, you were talk, you were calling Chepe a jobber last time on the show. Dude, you? I know, and that's why I have to eat crow, dude. I, I, hey, I, I, I – okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I ate my crow yeah, on my – I'm for anybody that doesn't know, I've had a channel for at least three, four years now, and every time I'm wrong, you can find me crow. on Monday morning on my channel eating shit and crow. And I did it with Chepe, and I – dude, he's a better fighter than I gave him credit for. He right. is the that's dog probably, that you said. That's credit because I do remember you being like, this job – Oh, yeah. Chepe. Oh, dude, yeah, for oh, sure. I, was, I definitely okay. did that. Everything that Mills is saying is true. So, yeah, yeah. Chepe is better than I gave him credit for. But I just think I think Morgan Charia is just a little bit sharper. Man, and that price tag is nice, man. Like it's really I, not that chalky. I kind of love it. I'll minus tell you what. One, minus one. Yeah, it's, it's not 155, what these odds I'll say. I'll tell you what. If you a, want the, to, the, I, if, if if it's not unanimous, I, I'm down with putting Morgan in my version of the parlay. I'll just say that. Mm. See, one in eight in decisions, bro. That is wild, bro. That's wild. I don't think it's going to decision personally. I I think Chepe's been, yeah, yeah. He's lost to a decent level of competition, but they all fucking obliterate him. I think he's a, I think Morgan's a little bit closer to Steve Garcia and Joe Anderson Brito than he is to fucking Jack Jenkins and Trevor Peak. I definitely agree with you on that. Alexander Hernandez versus Damon Jackson. TC, why are you still on the mic? Does it hit three bells? Uh, no, I think Hernandez knocks him out in the first round. Although, I do think inside the distance is nice for this because I could see Jackson. Uh, if Hernandez gets tired, I can see Jackson submitting him off a no. very easy takedown. No, is you going with the guy that you've interviewed and the crazy eyes in this fucking graphic, dude? It fucking freaks me out. Yeah, man. So, I reached out to Damon Jackson fight week. <sighs> Thought about getting an interview with him, but to be honest, I think I already got like two or three. Uh, and Pub just got an interview with uh, James Lynch on the channel that dropped this week. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to do it, even though my interviews are a lot different. You know, I really get into it. Uh, seconds out and everything like that. Uh, a little bit different detailed questions and stuff. Not your typical. What are you doing different for this camp? You know, like, who gives a fuck about that shit? But uh, yeah, so um, in this one, though, reached out to him. He said, hey, man. I want to take him to them later rounds. I know he gasses. When he said that, I was like, smart man, smart man. Shout out to him. But my prediction, my pick, when I first seen it, I just thought it was like this. Alex Fernandez wins by KO uh, inside the distance. I just think this is a fight to where he can look like the old Alex Fernandez knocking people out. We've seen Damian Jackson kind of just stand around their hands low and look chinny. And Alex Fernandez, for those first five minutes, he's on. I mean, I don't think there's a, yes, there is. There's a better first round five minute fighter, but I'm going to just say, I don't think there's a better first round five minute fighter than Alex Hernandez, man. You know what I mean? That type of take. Uh, But so I think he's going to be live out there. Um, You know, if this goes to the later rounds, I do lean with Damian Jackson. I've been making money on him, man. I only lost uh, shit when he fought Dan Ige, you know? So uh, this was one to where I could have went back to war with him. But my, my first initial gut read on this fight was 
damn, I think Damian Jackson's going to get knocked out by Alex Hernandez, you know? So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go with that one, but shout out to him though, man. Uh, Same. And, and dude, to your point, man, Jackson could be a nasty live bet. Like if, if you see Hernandez start to fade at the end of the second, like yeah. first round, right. And he just starts looking around that, that look on his face that, Oh my God! I didn't drink my milk. Hernandez today. has a horrible poker face, dude. He he starts right. to get that look right. in his eyes, right. like his right. that that right. ga- that gate mouth, like oh right. my God! Right. We can see it from the from a mile away. We know already. Oh, he's bluffing. He's bluffing. Billy, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I actually, gotta get on out of here. Um, I actually think they. Jackson's a live dog. I just don't – I just – minus 200 price tag on Alex Hernandez is never something I'm ever going to get behind. Uh, it's just too many failed times, too many bad gas tanks. Uh, it's just a battle of the gas tank. Whoever has a better gas tank in this fight is probably going to win the fight, and it's not priced like that. Um, I think Damon Jackson, he said he doesn't like Alex Hernandez or something about uh, some – uh, Donald Cerrone fighter or whatever. Uh, he's been talking a whole lot of shit. Looks like he got a hair transplant. Shit, I'm buying into it. I think the dog's live here in the co-main event. And then the main event, before I get on out of here, um, I like B.A., man. B.A. is one of my favorite picks of the week uh, for my potential parlay picks. Um, I would probably go Inacio Batamondes, one. Uh, number two, uh, probably go with... Do you like Morono? Um, Alex Morono. Yeah. Like yeah, her. and then number three, I, I think B.A. B.A. styles on Chris Curtis in this fight. Uh, you're getting a fighter on a six-fight win streak, minus 200. Usually more times than not, we see price tags of minus 350 unless they're named DDP on a six-fight win streak at the middleweight division. B.A.'s due for a title shot, man. First time that they fought, short notice. Uh, this one, kind of a shorter, short notice, but not as short of a notice as Brandon Allen got that first draw. Um, I think he's seen this style of fight before. He's got to get one back on this gym down here at Extreme Couture. GC, what are your thoughts on the main event? Uh, I like Allen, but not with nearly as much confidence as Billy. I think that I think Allen actually like goes against his own instincts and fights smart here and gets it to the ground. I know people are like, oh, dude, Chris Curtis is impossible to take down. I just don't think he's been fighting the best wrestlers ever. And I don't think Allen is necessarily that. He usually counts on like hurting his opponent. But I do feel like he's going to get it to the ground. And I think he's going to get on top of Chris Curtis and exact his revenge. But I'm just not that confident, man. Allen is just he fights like a bobo and just tries to be a tough guy against like big, just big, bigger, tougher dudes. So I could see him getting knocked out again. but. Yeah, I'm going to pick Allen with a, with a very shriveled nut sack. Mills? Fuck, bro. So all week, man, I've been saying Chris Curtis. You know, did my little video, said Chris Curtis. But, yeah, man, I just, fuck, man. Like, I'm, Chris Curtis never really won money for me, I don't think. Maybe once. Uh, and that was maybe last fight against Barry. Uh, but I've been on the other side of him a lot of his times out. And I kind of got convinced in this one. The reason why was because, you know, now he's making his uh, mainstay. Hit, well, mainstay, a middleweight. Well, never mind. It's not mainstay shit. He's always welterweight, middleweight. Fuck it. Throw that uh, scenario out the, out the window with that one. All right. The rematch. You know, Chris Curtis already won. Knocked him out. So what, man? Like, look at what's been happening since that fight. I think Chris Curtis is two and two, and I think B. Allen is five and zero with a Davy Crockett hat. Uh, and he's he's believing in, in himself. The confidence is there. He's one of the guys that came from LFA. Same time Chris Dawkins and uh, Kyle Dawkins came out, you know, and it was kind of like, well, what's the difference between a Kyle Dawkins and a Brandon Allen? You know, and we see we see what's the difference now. Kyle Dawkins over there fighting his TFFC, uh, but Brandon Allen. R- r- slippery start, you know, but once he got his feet wet now, man, he, he's he been putting in some good wins. Uh, You know, put out that win against Jacob Malcoon in a fight we all thought he lost. But besides that, he was supposed to be taking on Marvin Vittori. And if you were to get past Marvin Vittori, then, you know, you're like, all right, cool. Like, you know, we can put you up against maybe the top three fighters in the division and see what happens next in there. Um, As the week went by and as I'm doing this podcast now, I'm thinking Brandon Allen, too, a little bit, man. Like, Chris Curtis, like, short-notice fight taking this, too. Like, if this gets past the third round, 
Brandon Allen, if he wants to be smart, just stays apart, use his feet, use the distance, and strike him from the from the outside, mix in the takedowns and get him down. Um, yeah, man. So I'm I'm kind of fuck, bro. I'm kind of. It's tough counting on Allen to be smart, though, Bubba. I, it just is like he's the more skilled fighter overall. I think, though. If, if I if I was to make a pick on this, it'd probably be on the Brendan Allen side, just because. Even though it is a little more crazy, I think we know exactly what we're gonna get out of Brandon Allen. Yeah, no, I'm doing it, man. I'm switching it. Yeah, I'm going with Brandon Allen, man. I've seen Chris Curtis enough, man. I, I seen him fight in PFL before PFL was popular. All right, I got noticed to win on him. You know, I, I, I'm a little biased when it comes to you know fighters with the same skin and ethnicity of me. Sometimes you're half you know? white too, so I am. I am. I am. So, so it's easy for me to be You're like biased. Tim Watley with the Jewish jokes and the Catholic jokes. Like you just, you get it all, you know, all in one. All in one, baby. Get but I didn't, see, I, didn't, I didn't see him lose enough. You know, I didn't see him retire in the PFL cage and then have to come back and fight again. Um, And from there, I wasn't really impressed. I was impressed, though, when he came on the Contender Series and, you know, got that win with that Shawn Michaels kick. But since then, from in the UFC... He's just been kind of like a, a tough, durable man. Man, you know, he's not like, oh, shit, Hassan, House, Hassan Rock Hassan coming out there, knocking people out, then he just gasses out. Like, Chris Curtis, you're not going to just – he's overall good at a lot of stuff, but he's just not special in one thing. Um, So I'm not going to – I'm not going to let – um. My bias, not even biasy. I'm gonna just stick with it, bro. I, I'm going with Brandon Allen in this one, man. I, the all week I was on Chris Curtis, but yeah, I, I seen Chris Curtis cry to the referee, cry to coaches, cry to this, do this, do that, and it's like Brandon Allen ain't gonna cry to the ref. He gonna look at the ref and be like, "Oh, he ain't see this shit. Cool. Let me slip this little arm in and choke him out real quick." So the pick is Brandon Allen. I say he wins by submission, uh, round four. All right, boys, let's get to the meat of the, the the potatoes of the show. What are we going to do on this parlay? That is the $65,000 question, isn't it? Um, I I like Morono and Baja Mondes based on what Billy said. Um, but what what do you think, Mills and Big Show? What do y'all think about those? I like the Baja Mondes pick. Yeah, um, I like I think we got it. We already got the base. It was already set up. Um, we we all like Bahamondes. Billy even said he likes Moreno. Um, Tucson likes Moreno as well. So I think those would be the setup for the base. Yeah, I, like, right? I like Moreno. That's fine with me. So the base being Bahamondes and Moreno. Yep. Let's do it. It's minus one forty. Uh, let me get a pen real quick. So oh, um, I'm torn on my leg, man. I got a couple couple candidates that I think could be nasty. All right, go shoot him off. Fuck. It's – I kind of want to go a little bit unconventional and put Argetta in there. I know that he's an underdog, but uh, the odds would be the odds would be real nice. Ah, fuck, man. No, no, I, I already mouthed off enough about it. I'm, I'm going Captain Morgan, the last pirate, Morgan Chalier. I'm going to say I'm gonna say he fucking chin checks Chebe Mariscal. And, uh, yeah, that'll be my leg. So TC's got Morgan going with a little two seater. Moreno and Bahamondas. Mills, what about you? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um let me just I'm gonna go with um mm, mm, g- g- give me a second. What well, what do you like, Big Show? Because um I just wanna uh, look at- I th- I think Billy had it pretty nailed down. I like Campbell as probably my third piece. It's either Campbell or Hernandez. Woo, y'all might be sweating that Campbell leg, Bobo. I'm I'm for sure I will be, but <laughs> um okay. All right. Yeah, man. Um let me just look again, look again, look again, look again, and I'm gonna go with Damn. Did Billy yeah. say his three piece? Did, was, huh? he at, was he at Allen? I think, yeah, I think he said he liked Brendan Allen. I'm not 100%. Yeah, he liked Brandon Allen, so that, that could be his th- third leg for that one. Uh, my third leg, I'll go ahead and take... um. 
Man, I'm gonna take Walter Walker. I think um I think this is a setup fight for him to get it done. Okay, that was a uh, that was one out of left field for me. I got that at a plus one thirty seven Mills. Okay, yeah. Um, actually, nah, man. Let me stick with my more confident one, man. I'm gonna go with Yours was a two oh nine for me, TC. What's that? I said yours was a plus two oh nine for me. I got it. Uh, I just I just bet it on DK. I got plus two twenty for Morono, Bahamondes, and Morgan. That's gonna work, bro. Plus two twenty would be on the sheet. What you thinking there, Mills? You flip flopping again? Ah man. Stick yeah. to guys, stick to your guts. All right, fuck it. I'll stick with the girl, man. I'm I'm gonna take Melissa Mullinson, man. Oh, I, oh, oh, let's fucking go! I love it. Let's go. I'm I'm gonna stick with the girl and the gut. You know what I mean? Let's go to All one. Right, so that's gonna get you a plus one twenty. Is that fine with you? Did you? Oh, fuck, bro. Oh, don't be flip flopping again. I just asked it all out, motherfucker. All right, this is my last one. No, no, no. I'm going with G Matsumoto, man. I'm, I'm going with G Matsumoto. All right. I, I, so I, still wanted, I just don't want the first fight of the night to kind of be like my, my oh, okay. Oh. And, you know? and to have me running my fucking yapper. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> all in the fucking stream. All, all for the other 11 fights. I told you she's a fucking jobber. You should have planted your flag. Oh man, yeah, I don't blame you, dude. All right, so I got a plus one seventy two on that one, Mills. So plus two twenty per mil, uh, PC with Morgan added on to Baja Mundus and Moreno. Mills is adding on Gene plus one seventy two to Baja Mundus and Moreno. Billy, I'm gonna ask bro, him, bro, but it'll probably be on. What? Keep going. Keep going, bro. My phone's about to ring. Keep going. Oh, all right. So, Billy, I'm going to ask him backstage. He did say something about Allen. So, if he likes Allen offstage, I will add it to the parlay for everybody. Shout out to everybody listening on Talking Hands. You can hey, catch the hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, bro. My phone, phone call? 1-800-F-R-A-U-D alert. Hi, my name's Mills. I want to report an uh, ongoing fighter that I want to report as a fraud alert. Oh, yeah. First name, <laughs> hear me out, Jermaine. Last name, the random me. Man, come on now, man. What are we doing? What are we talking about? We're talking about a fighter who held the belt, who turned down to fight another fighter in Cyborg because she was scared. And said it was because of PEDs or steroids. Stop it. Everybody was using that at the time. And man, you you turning down fights and you the champion? No way at all. You're supposed to be the real one in here. Let me just take you down memory lane for people that don't know about Joran Randomy. Okay. Let's talk about some of her losses. Some of her losses to the better competition, right? Amanda Nunez twice and Julia Budd. All right, cool. Enough about that. Let's talk about some of her big wins. All right, hear me out. Big win, Juliana Pena. Okay, cool. Biggest win, right? What's the second biggest win? Holly Holm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She was one that beat Larissa Pacheco when she first came to the UFC. Besides those and Raquel Pennington, she ain't really got nothing under her belt. I don't think that she does a lot of things great. I think in this one, Norma Dumont's going to go out there and have her way with her. After she gets done on the phone call with me, she's going to be done. Four years off, 40-year-old fighter, go home and be a mom. 1-800-FRAUD-ALERT, Jermaine Durand me. Bye-bye. There you go. You got a 1-800-FRAUD-ALERT after the show, basically. I don't know why you didn't just do that during the fucking card, but. <laughs> shout out to everybody listening on talking hands like i said there will be a repeat on youtube sometime today probably around four or five o'clock if you want to get in there talk ask some questions some of us will be in there if we can make it to the the premiere um go check out pub sports radio like you seen in the beginning of the podcast join the ufc tournament every week 100 bucks is given out all you gotta do is make your picks just like on tapology Mills, what do you got going on the rest of the week? And what's your favorite bet of the day? Sorry, yeah, that's kind of winged. 
It's all good, man. Uh, my favorite bet of the day, I'll go ahead and give you that one. Uh, my favorite bet on this whole card, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, fight not going the distance and the Charlie Campbell Trevor Pete card. Uh, that's my favorite bet of the day. Uh, what we got going on later on in the locker room and over at Pop Sports Radio, we got an exclusive interview with uh, Julius Holmes, uh, up-and-coming prospect fighter uh, from CFFC Promotion. That's going to be dropping tomorrow on Pop Sports Radio, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah, so check that out. Uh, besides that, got an interview out right now with Jalen Turner uh, floating around on the Internet. You guys could uh, search that up, MMA Locker Room Interviews Jalen Turner. Uh, he's fighting on UFC 300. And, yeah, man, same old thing over here at Pub Sports Radio. We giving out 100. Damn, police swerving in this motherfucker. Oh, yeah, we giving out $100 uh, to anybody on the Pub Sports Radio contest. So that's where you guys going to catch us at this Saturday. Damn, what the fuck happened? These niggas tripping. DC, what about you, brother? What do you got going on the rest of the week, and what's your favorite look? That was a beautiful segue, Mills. <clears throat> um, so, uh, first of all, shout out to both y'all and shout out to Billy as well. It is great to be back on the air doing this podcast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, everyone listening, make sure you download it. And, uh, yeah, check out the uh, the Talking Hands premiere later. So, uh, as far as myself, um, on my channel, I've been doing uh, pregames. So, uh, if y'all want to, just come through. I'll drop the link in the uh, in the group chat. Anybody from uh, Pub wants to come through on panel or in the chat um shoot the shit before the fights and then uh yeah i'll be in the uh the bet companion slash uh fight companion trying to win some money trying to win that contest for the fourth time so yeah like big show said sign up for the contest uh shout out to the uh the reigning champ uh who will hopefully be soon dethroned so yeah shout out to you boys best of luck and uh let's fucking go oh and my favorite bet is the curtain jerker nora cornole Pick them fight that you're getting for crazy odds. So, yeah, let's fucking go. She's going to dice this bitch. There you go. There you go. As always, check us out at Pub Switch Radio on Twitter. You can also check this, the actual podcast home on Twitter at MMA Locker Room Talk Podcast. Um, good luck with all your bets this weekend. Looking forward to next weekend, UFC 300. Peace out, everybody. Peace, peace, peace.